Thanks for tuning in this morning. My name is Ashley Sears, and we are in part two of a series called Crazy Times. After the message, I want to invite you to tune in, stick around, and hear about some ways that you can stay connected with us here at Ridgepoint Church and with each other. Here's Pastor John. Hey, thanks, Ashley, and thank all of you that are joining us here online. You know, there's a couple of things that we're going to do a little different this week. There's always a learning curve. And one of those things is that our chats are being hosted on Facebook and YouTube. So, hey, let us know that you're watching. You know, last week, a lot of you posted some pictures on social media about your family watching or groups of friends, and those were awesome. And so thank you so much for doing that. Now, to help it feel a little bit more like church, hang on just a second. Yes, I brought my own donut and coffee. And it's the good donut. I mean, it's a chocolate bar. So uh, hopefully you have some uh, good food there uh, as we watch this together. Well, maybe the best thing that any of us could do would be just to take a deep breath. Wow. Things change every day. And now we're supposed to shelter in place. What I really wish is that I could talk to each of you. And if I, if I could have that conversation, I'd ask you, man, how are you doing? There's a lot of stuff that's going on. And I wonder how many of us are uh, overwhelmed, stressed out, and in anxiety. Well, now we're not supposed to go to places. We're working at home. Our schools are closed. How many of you who have children, you're already to this point right here? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought, and maybe that's not a bad plan. Well, it's crazy times, and uh, what adds to the crazy is the unknown of what's next. For example, is this going to be 21 days? Is it going to be 42 days? Who knows? Well, there's always been crazy times. And James is writing about some crazy times in James chapter number 5. So let's read this together. We're going to start verse number 1. Here we go. Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away, and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you were counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have, hoarded, will testify against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of heaven's armies. You spent your years on earth in luxury satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. Now, those are some pretty harsh words about the economic, cultural, and moral condition of the time. And frankly, things were just awful. And no, it's not apples and apples. We can look at where we are from the economic, cultural, and moral condition of our country, from uh, the, the disease that uh, is, is going through and affecting so many people. You know, it's awful. So what James does in the very next verse is he helps us to know what we're supposed to do. Here's what it says, first few words of verse number seven. It says this, dear brothers and sisters. So what he's about to say is he's about to talk to those who are, are Christians. And uh, with everything that is happening, this is what we're supposed to do. All, all the instruction, the action plans, the goals, everything that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, James could have told us what we're supposed to do. This is what he says. 
Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Now, I'm not sure that that's exactly what they wanted to hear in this time of persecution that they were going through. And sometimes I'm pretty sure that it's not exactly what we want to hear. When you tell someone, hey, what you need to do is just be patient, it's a lot like telling someone, hey, what you need to do is just be calm. Sometimes it really doesn't work too well. And of all the things that uh, we need right now, and we need a lot of things, patience is what is needed by everyone. So our kids need patience. Our spouses need patience. I mean, everyone in these trying times needs patience. Now, here's the definition of patience. Patience is the ability to endure waiting, delay, or provocation without becoming annoyed or upset, to persevere calmly when faced with difficulties. Well, <laughs> that's easy to put on a screen, right? And if I were to ask you, are you a patient person? What would your answer be? There's a study that shows that 80% of people say that they are patient. That same study shows that 96% of people will eat something or drink something that is way too hot, but they will eat or drink it anyway. Now, we can say we're patient, and sometimes we can say we're patient as long as we get to redefine patience. Look at this definition. Patience is what you have when there are too many witnesses. Now, if there's anybody uh, that is watching this with you that's looking a little nervous now, right there, they were just not going to do something because there were too many witnesses. James is going to help us understand that when it comes to patience, there are three times that we're just going to need an extra dose of patience. So here's the first one. I need patience when my circumstances are out of my control. That sounds a lot like what's going on right now. Now here's what all of verse number seven says. It says, dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. So, what Christians are to do is they are to wait for the Lord's return. You know, when that happens, there's going to be a trumpet that's going to sound, it's, and you've never heard a trumpet sound like that. There's going to be a, a shout, and it's a voice that you've never heard before, but you'll recognize the voice. Christians are to wait for the Lord's return. And, uh, you know, when that happens, we're going to be changed. We're going to be reunited with our loved ones. We're going to be able to see our Savior. And uh, someone says, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We don't have any control over that. We don't have any control over the timing of his return. Only God the Father knows that time. And James goes on to help us understand in another example. That farmers are to have patience. They don't have any control over the weather or how much they can harvest or what the prices will be. And what happens is that instead of having patience, we try to have control. And it shows up in worry. We'll worry about things that uh, we can't change, but so much of our time and energy is consumed by well, what happens, and what about this, and oh, it's the worst case scenario. You know, there are some things that only God can change. And when God changes things, he can change things in an instant, but you know, usually he changes things in a process. And so we have to be patient. We have to be patient when we know that the circumstances are out of our control. Here, here's the next thing. I need patience when people in my life don't change. Do you have any stubborn people in your life? Now, I hope everybody that is watching with you is not pointing at you, right? But people that, uh, you know, they just keep doing the same thing. 
do you wish that they would kind of grow up and, and change? Verse number 10 says, For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Those Old Testament prophets had to have some of the most difficult jobs there have ever been. Uh, they, they spoke to people and nobody listened. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. He begged the nation of Israel to change. And he and other Old Testament prophets suffered the consequences of speaking truth because people didn't want to change. They pushed back and sometimes even killed the messenger. What we want is we just want change to happen quickly. And, and when nothing seems to be happening, well, maybe it's because of that difficult person who's in our lives, that, that stubborn person. Uh, maybe it's because God is taking them through a process for them to mature, for them to develop their faith. And so if you have a person like that in your life, we've got to hang in there and still be around when that change happens. It's a season. Have patience. Now, here's the last example from James. And we really don't want to hear about this one, but, but here it is. I need patience when my problems are unexplainable. It's those times where there aren't any answers. We don't get it. Here's what verse 11 says. It says, we give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance, you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. Job is just living his life, and in two days, that life is ripped apart. And in all those things that happened on top of those horrible things, well, his wife and his friends accuse him of things that he didn't do. And for the first 37 chapters, in the book of Job, God doesn't speak. He doesn't tell him why this is happening, and Job doesn't get it. But throughout all of it, he maintains his faith. We can lose patience trying to figure out why things happen. It's a lot harder to lose patience when we depend on who. We had an example of that in our church this week. Many of you know Craig and Deanna Morfitt, and Craig passed away earlier in the week. And it's hard to know why. It doesn't seem like there's any explanations that really make sense. But what we have to do is we have to trust in the Lord because he knows exactly his plan, his purpose, and his timing. When Problems are unexplainable. It's important that we're patient. What is it that God is trying to teach me? And part of my faith in all this is to be strengthened. In the beginning of it and in the middle of these difficult circumstances, we may not see what's going on, but when you get to the end of it, what you find is that the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. So, in the middle of having patience under these really trying times, what are some practical steps that will help me when people are driving me crazy? Well, here's the first one. I need help with patience. All of us need help. I mean, we can't do this by ourselves. I mean, there are times when you just feel your blood pressure going up what are we supposed to do? Well, let's go back to verse number 7. It says, Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. So what's interesting in this verse is that there is a valuable harvest that's going to ripen. And when you are patient and you are waiting for God to work, You've got a valuable harvest. You may not know exactly what that is, 
but God is doing something in your life. God's doing something in the lives of the people who are around you. And so we need that help. We can wait expectantly. We can pray believing. And we need to wait on the Lord. And maybe what we need to also realize is that maybe God is waiting on me. This is a challenging question. Take a look. What if God gave me the same level of patience that I give to others? Wow. That kind of puts it in perspective because we all want God to be patient with us. So maybe that'll be uh, encouragement for us to be patient with others. I, I need to grow and mature in some areas. There are areas where God has to be patient with me. Here, here's what Psalm 130 verse 5 says. It says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I do hope. Part of what can uh, develop patience in our lives is uh, studying God's word. Maybe looking up some verses that have to do with patience, stress, worry. There's great Bible studies on any of these topics that you can find on YouVersion or other places. I need help with patience. Well, here's the second thing we need. I need quiet patience. Now, is there any such thing as yelling patience? And the reason why James addresses this is because he really knows us well. Look at verse number nine. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. When we become frustrated and, and we lose our patience, does everyone know about it? I mean, are we guilty of, of taking out our frustration, our anxiety, our stress on the people that we love the most? You know, we've all been guilty of saying things that we regret. And you can go back and ask for forgiveness, and most of the time, people will forgive you. But here's what also happens. They'll never forget. They'll just never forget. And it's a wound that happens that uh, shouldn't have happened if we had a little more patience. Look, God knows what we're doing. God knows what we're saying. I mean, he's standing right there, and uh, we're going to be held accountable. If you get to the point of blowing up, man, do something different. I was uh, playing golf the other day, and on a uh, par three hole, I hit one out of bounds, and then I hit another one that was almost out of bounds, and then I hit it into the sand trap, and then I hit it... Uh, well, but still in the sand trap, and still in the sand trap, and I, it was crazy. I, I was just about ready to throw a club to say something that I, I didn't want to say, and I just thought, man, I, I just can't do that. So I just grabbed the golf ball and quietly walked away. Sometimes that's exactly what we need to do. Take some time. You know, a great outlet for impatience, pressure, and stress is prayer. Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. So, you know what? You can do more than you imagine. When you ask help from God and you wait quietly, and here's the last one. I need a confident patience. It's not because I know how things are going to work out or because, you know, things have suddenly become a lot easier. It's just because of this. It says, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. And so when I don't know, he knows. When I'm not sure, he's sure. When I don't know the reasons why, God knows all the answers. And I can look back to the past, and I bet you can as well, to some things that have happened. And you look back, and you see that God has never abandoned us. He's never failed us. He's always been faithful. He's always been present. And when things aren't easy, and uh, our, our stress level rises, and our anxiety starts to 
to overcome us and the tension is so thick that you could cut it with a knife. Well, those are the opportunities for us to grow. They're the opportunities for us to ask God to help us. It's the opportunities to realize that what's happening right now is that God is teaching us a valuable lesson. Here's one last thing. Tonight, when you look back over today, can you think of one person or one circumstance that you had patience with? And you needed that patience and that crazy circumstance, maybe that patience with that stubborn person. But you know, you and with God's help, you had patience. Let's pray together. God, we come before you this morning, and it's some really difficult times. And there are people uh, that absolutely are impacted by their jobs and, and, and families and some who, people who are sick. I pray, Lord, that uh, in this time of testing, that the fruit of the Spirit would come out in each follower of Jesus Christ, that patience would help us to make a difficult situation better. And Lord, may we learn to have more faith in you, to love you more, and may good come out of this bad. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to grab my donut, and I'm going to toss it back over to Ashley. Thanks, Pastor Jeff. Like I said before, there are several ways to stay connected with us here at Bridgepoint and with each other. And the first way is to text the word LOOP to 208-826-4433. That helps you stay connected with some of the updates that we have. Another way to stay connected is to jump into one of our reading plans that we created. It's a devotional study. If you wanna do that, text the word STUDY to 208-826-4433. It's really easy to catch up. We'd love for you to join us. In this time of social distancing, we as a staff do not want to distance ourselves from the needs of our congregation. So if you have a need or even just a prayer request, please don't hesitate to send us an email at info at bridgepointchurch.com. We as a staff are still finding creative ways to meet together and pray together for all of you. In order to meet these needs, we do so through your generosity. You can do that one of three ways. You can go to your church center app and click the giving button. You can go to bridgepointchurch.com or you can just drop a check in the mail and send it to Bridgepoint Church. Whatever way you decide to do that, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you again here next week. And don't forget, stay healthy, trust God, and wash your hands.